Welcome back to Kick and Crochet. Today we're talking about broomstick lace. So this is, let me raise this up a little bit. This is a broomstick lace neck warmer that I made for my daughter. This one is made with super bulky yarn, which is not a yarn you typically see used with broomstick lace, but it makes this really fun kind of texture. So today I'm going to show you how to make broomstick lace. I'm not going to demonstrate with this super bulky yarn. This specific yarn is a Malabrigo Rasta, or sorry, yeah, Malab Malabrigo Rasta in color cyan. Um, but I'm just going to use a regular worsted weight yarn. So here I've just got some paint box, Simply Erin. What you're going to need for this project is a yarn, whatever yarn you want to use, it doesn't really matter. Um, a hook that goes with that yarn. So here I've got a size H hook and some kind of tube. <laughs> I know that's very vague. Um, a lot of people will use a big knitting needle. So this one is a 35 knitting needle. I have also in the past used like the cover for my candy thermometer that's a cylinder. I think people have actually used broomsticks, hence the name broomstick lace. So really you just need something that is a cylinder. The bigger your cylinder, the taller your stitches are going to be. So you could use something short. I wouldn't recommend anything too skinny because it's going to make it difficult. And too fat is going to make it um, just really kind of wobbly and maybe that's a look you're going for. But I'd suggest starting with something kind of in the middle. If you're in a pinch and you're careful with it, you could just use like a rolled up tube of paper just like regular printer paper, roll it up in a tube and tape it, and that can make a cylinder that you can use for this. So, uh, you can do some variations on broomstick lace, but just to get started, I want you to make a strip of single crochet in a multiple of four stitches. So here I've just got a small sample. I did 12 foundation single crochets. So that's three groups of four. Now, instead of chaining and turning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up these loops onto my knitting needle one at a time. So the knitting needle is nice because it has the pointy tip so you can slide it on. The downside is if you don't make sure that you slide the loop all the way onto the cylinder part of the needle, they might end up different sizes. So make sure you pull it all the way onto the cylinder. So I'm just going to put that first loop onto my knitting needle here. And you can leave it a little bit loose, but not too loose. You want all the loops the same size. I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch, grab that yarn, and usually I just pull it up with the hook, but you can use your finger to help get it on there, and just put it on your needle. So now I'm going to do this with every stitch going all the way across. For this reason, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Tunisian crochet, because you work down the row picking up loops. And the only trick is you want to make sure you're not twisting those loops. Or if you do twist them, you twist them the same on every loop because you want it to look the same for every stitch. And if you twist the loops, it will look not the same for every stitch. So we're just gonna get each of these loops right up on our hook. All the way across. And every loop I'm snugging it up just a little bit just so all those loops end up the same size, but I'm not pulling it super tight because that just kind of makes it hard to do. I will show you two basic variations here on how to do the subsequent rows just so you can get an idea of what they look like and make a choice for yourself about what you want to do. So I have made a um, like an earring holder out of this. I've made fingerless gloves out of this and obviously the neck warmer that I showed you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I have 12 loops on my hook now. And the next step is we're gonna work these loops off of our hook and I'm just gonna single crochet. This is one of the places where you can make variations on broomstick lace by changing which stitch you're gonna do but I'm just going to do single crochet. Oops, that's not the right tail. There we go. Okay, so you can, if you want to, slip all of the loops off the hook, at, off the needle at the same time, but we're only going to work into them four at a time, so I just slip off four, my first four loops. And now I'm going to do four single crochets. On your very first one, make sure you're not pulling this yarn too tight because you'll shrink your loops. So here's one, two, 
three, four. Now you can choose to pull different numbers of loops off your hook at a time. However many loops you pull off, that's how many stitches you're gonna do in those loops. So now I'll get my next group of four stitches, of my four loops, excuse me, off my needle. And now I'm gonna do again four single crochets. One, two, making sure I'm getting through all four loops on each stitch. Three, Now my last group of four, through all four loops, making sure none of them are twisted, four single crochets, one, two, three, four. So that is our first row of broomstick lace. So you can see it makes this cool texture and it you can see it a lot better with a thinner yarn here, whereas the super bulky yarn Unless I use a really big cylinder and a bigger hook, you're not going to see the laciness of it. So it, you know, calling it broomstick lace seems a little weird when I make this thick pattern. But here you can see how lacy it can be. So now, depending on the pattern, you might have a few rows of regular crochet in here. But if you're just doing broomstick lace, then it's time to pick up some more loops on your hook. So this is just the same as before, we're gonna pick up these loops. One stitch at a time until we've got the loops on our needle. You shouldn't have lost any stitches. You started with 12, you had 12 loops, and you did 12 stitches coming back, so now you should again have 12 loops at the end of this row. Okay. okay, so now that we have all of our loops back on our hook, you have two options. So standard broomstick lace, you're just gonna do exactly the same thing that we did on the first row, so you'll have these things stacked on top of each other perfectly lined up. If you instead want them um, to be offset a little bit, then I'll show you how to do that now. That is what I did on this. So you can see these are not perfectly aligned. So they're offset a little bit because I did it this second way. So if you want them offset, you're gonna, instead of taking four loops off your hook for the first set, you're just gonna take half that number. So just two loops. But again, however many loops you take off, that's how many single crochets you're gonna do. So I'm just gonna do two single crochets. That counts as my first one. And here's my second one. And now I will take four loops off my hook because that's what size my regular broomstick lace bundle is going to be. Now I'll do four single crochets through all four of those loops. One, two, three, four. And now I'll take the next four loops off. Again, I'll do four single crochets because I have four loops. One, two, three, four. And then I'll finish it by taking the last two loops off. One, two, okay, my loop. And do two single crochets there. One, two. So here you can see that now my broomstick lace bundles are offset. And then if I was gonna keep doing it this way, on my next row I would go back to this, on the row after I would do that, and I would just alternate back and forth. So this is basic technique of how to do broomstick lace. Uh, I hope that you found it useful and you can get a free copy of this neck warmer pattern on my website, but I think by now you probably already know how to do it. You're just doing offset broomstick lace with a chunky yarn. Happy crocheting!